today we're going to talk about inequalities, and you're going to see that inequalities are very, very, very similar to equations. The difference is it doesn't have an equal sign. Equations, do you hear the word equals? Inequalities have the less than or equal to symbols. So go ahead and grab your spiral notebook, highlighter or crayon, whatever it is that you're going to use today in your notes, and then um, make sure you write down the vocabulary. You need to be very familiar with the less than and greater than symbols, what they mean, and how you say them. It is really important you not know just the mouth eats the bigger number. That's a great theory, but you need to really understand the labels and the words because we're going to be taking using that. Also, less than. If you put a little line underneath, do you know that that means less than or equal to? That little extra line adds the equal sign. Do you see it? Okay, great. Go ahead and pause the video. Make sure you have everything you need. And then come on back and we'll continue on with inequalities. All right, the first thing is you want to make sure that you have your, um, a good understanding of the graphing piece. Now, this is a bit of a review, but we're going to go through it again just to make sure that you are remembering. When you do some graphing for inequalities, that is a part of every single one of those examples, you're going to need to make sure you have an open or a closed circle. Now, an open circle just means a circle that's not colored in, and a closed circle is colored in. Okay? The open circle means that that answer is not part of the solution set. It's not one of the answers that would work for that particular problem. Now, a closed circle means that number is part of the solution set. That is an example or an answer that would work. I want you to go ahead and jot down each one of these examples and also draw a number line for each one. And then come on back and we're going to do some graphing together. Make sure you have your highlighter. Go ahead and copy that information down and then come on back. Okay, great. Let's do some graphing together. Now, notice I have x is greater than negative 2, x is greater than negative 2, here are those words, really important, x is greater than negative 2. So I have my number line, I put the negative 2 in the middle, because there's no need to spend a lot of time on drawing your number lines. x is greater than negative 2. So I'm going to find my negative 2 on my number line, then I have to decide, should I color it in, or should I keep it open? You have to look at the symbol to figure that out. It's greater than negative 2. So is negative 2 an option? It is not. It's an open circle. You used an open circle for the less than or greater than symbols only. So I'm going to keep that as an open circle, and I'm going to shade with your highlighter or crayon. Shade all the numbers bigger than negative 2. Did you shade this way? I hope so. Let's take a look at the next one y is less than or equal to negative 1. So I'm going to find negative 1 on my number line. Am I going to color that in? Is negative 1 an option? Is negative 1 part of that solution set? Absolutely it is. Do you know how I know? Because I look at that symbol right there. It's less than or equal to. Or equal to. That little extra line on the bottom, that tells me I need to color it in. You're going to use a closed circle for less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So y is less than or equal to negative 1. I need to graph all the numbers that are less than negative 1. That would be this way on my number line. Make sure you shade in the arrow as well, because all the numbers less than, that means negative 112 is also an option. All right, these words can be a little tricky. There are at least 25 students in the class, at least. Think about that for a minute. In a classroom, there's at least 25 students. Does that mean that there are 20 students? That there are 30 students? At least. That means the smallest number possible is 25. Is 25 an option? It sure is. So we're going to shade that, and we're doing at least 25. So you're looking for all the numbers that are bigger than 25. You could have 30 people in the class, you could have 29, you could have 31. Potentially, I guess you could have 76. That would be a very big class. All right, look at the next one. No more than 150 people. No more than. So here's my 150. The question is, do I color it in? No more than 150 people can sit in the room. Does that mean 150 people can sit there? 
Yes, 150 people can sit in the room. No more than that. That means all the numbers smaller than 150. I hope you're thinking these through with me. What I would do if I were you is I would pause the video and I would go and find my keyword list that we've created in the front or the back of your spiral notebook and you had to put some inequality words in there, make sure you have at least and no more than for the correct symbols. Let's take a look at this last one. This is called a compound inequality. You have two numbers with one variable. Here's how I would tackle that. Go ahead and cover up the back part and just read from the letter to the number. Here's where your words really need to matter. This is red. P is greater than 1. Do you see how I kind of read that backwards? Start at the letter. P is greater than 1. So I'm going to graph that. P is greater than 1. Okay. That would be an open circle. And all the numbers bigger than 1. Now let's cover up the 1 and do the other part. P is less than or equal to 5. Less than or equal to 5. So I'm going to find 5, color it in, and I'm going to shade this way. When you're all done, you are going to have two circles and shading in between those two circles. What this mean is, means is all of the numbers that are shaded are possible answers to that problem. 2 would work, 3 would work, 4 would work, and 5 would work. Does 1 work? Good. 1 does not work because it's not shaded in. It's not a closed circle. So it's going to be any number bigger than 1 and less than 5. Compound inequalities. They can be a little tricky, but just break them down into two parts. All right, now let's look at inequalities in terms of solving. You're going to do this the same way you would solve equations. So go ahead and jot down this example and pause the video and make sure you can understand I am solving just like I would a regular equation. The only difference is do you see that greater than symbol? I carried it down. So go ahead and jot that down. Notice there's a number line. You're going to need to write that down as well. Every time you solve an inequality, you also are going to need to graph it. If you take a look, we've got x is greater than 44. Do you see how I graphed that? That means any number bigger than 44 works in this problem. And you can see here I've checked my answer and shown you that, gosh, 45 is bigger than 44. Does that really work? Well, what's 45 minus 12? It's 33. Is 33 bigger than 32? It sure is. Do you see how that works? 50 minus 12. That's 38. That's not. That's bigger than 32 also. Go ahead and jot down this example and try it on your own and then come on back and we'll go over the answer. All right, here's your answer. Hopefully you have it solved correctly. Remember doing the inverse of adding. And then you've graphed. Make sure you have a closed circle and it's shading in the right direction. And I've shown you here how we can check some of those answers to see if they really work. Take a look at this next one. Same as solving equations, you're going to do the inverse. The inverse of dividing by 11 is timesing by 11. And then we're going to graph. Go ahead and jot down this example and try it on your own. And then come on back and we'll do, review it. Okay. Go ahead and check and see how you did. You should have divided by 4. You get a fraction. Was that tricky? I know, I put a little zinger in there on you, didn't I? 9 divided by 4. If you put the decimal term, that would be as well, fine too. Make sure you have a graph with a closed circle pointing to the left. Now, when we deal with uh, multiplying or dividing, it is really important that you pay attention to those negatives, and it's real important that you put a big star next to this in your notes. Whenever you are multiplying or dividing by a negative, we flip the sign. So take a look at this example here. I'm timesing by negative 6. So look at the sign flipped, and then I graph. Everything else is the same. Try this one. Copy it down, and then let's go over it together. Great. The opposite of timesing by negative 12 is dividing by negative 12. So I have negative 60 divided by negative 12 is 5. And because I'm dividing by a negative, I have to flip my sign. Make sure you have a graph as well. 
I would put five in the middle. You should have a closed circle on five, and you should be pointing this way. I want you to go ahead and write all these down, pause the video, and try them on your own, and then come on back and we'll go over them together. All right, these first two, did you graph them correctly? Make sure you have the open and closed circle properly and shade it in the right direction. Now let's take a look at 9, 10, and 11. You're going to want to add 17 to both sides. So C is less than or equal to, what's negative 6 plus 17? Good, 11. Make sure you do a graph with a closed circle on 11 and you are shading to the left. Try number 10. The opposite of dividing by negative 4 is timesing by negative 4. M and 13 times 4. Well, I don't know that either. Let's do it off to the side. 52. And we've got the signs are the same, so it's positive. And did you see how I'm timesing by a negative? I have to flip the sign. It's real easy to forget that step. So, we've got an open circle on 52, and it's shading to the right. And this last one is a tricky one. It's a two-step problem. We've done two-step equations. Two-step inequalities are the same. So we're going to add 9. First, do all of your adding and subtracting first. You get r, I'm out of room here, but r less than, what's negative 14 plus 9? And then the next step is to multiply by negative 2. R, 5 times 2 is 10. The signs are the same, so it's positive. And because I multiplied by a negative, I have to flip my sign. So I should have an open circle on 10, and I'm shading to the left. If you didn't get that last one, rewind the video and watch that one one more time. And make sure you can do two-step inequalities. I'll see you real soon for some more practice.